WA Legalised Cannabis MLC. The topic is strategies towards legalisation that anyone can participate in. So, a little bit of bio. Uh, Sophia is the Legalised Cannabis WA member for the Southwest region. She made history in 2021 as the first person to have gained a seat in Australian Parliament on a legalised cannabis platform alone. Well done. Sophia was initially trained as a registered nurse in Amsterdam sorry, before moving to Western Australia with her parents in 1983. Prior to politics, she studied at Perth Academy of Natural Therapies and has been practicing naturopathic and traditional Chinese medicine in the Perth metropolitan area. Ah, okay, Wampi, is there another microphone that I can... Yeah, this one? No, no, you're welcome. It took me long enough to be help again. <laughs> yeah, it's on. No, no, Hello, please. everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Wonderful. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for the beautiful introduction there. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. So it is, uh, this is my second time here. Uh, I was here last year soon after I was elected, but not yet sworn in. It was the first official event, Brian, the other gentleman that I was voted in with, and I went to it together. I think this, as a first official event, is a really lovely way to start your role as a politician. <laughs> it was a very different event last year because we were dealing with lockdowns uh, and hard borders as well, so ended up being stuck in them being a bit longer than anticipated. But obviously a lot can change in the year and we have seen that uh, together with the changes of state of emergency and things like that, as well as greater acceptance of cannabis. We have been normalising the use of cannabis and talking about cannabis over the last one and a half years at least, and it is making a change. People now accept cannabis as a medicine and as a recreational uh, option much more than when we started. So when I started, uh, and I don't know, Brian had the same thing, but I would introduce myself to people and say that I'm Sophia, that, you know, for the Legalised Cannabis Party, and they would smirk out, and that has changed, which is really good. What hasn't changed, though, is the incredibly warm welcome and the hospitality from all of the Nimbin crew here. You're all amazing, and you're so friendly. It's just, it's beautiful to be part of this community here, so thank you for that. Okay, now... Awesome. Yay. <laughs> um, as I was introduced, I was an RN. Uh, I did my registered nursing training in a hospital in Amsterdam. And this is 30 years ago already. And that's where I was first exposed to medicinal cannabis being used uh, somewhat, not under a decrim model, yeah, to help with nausea. We would have cancer patients that, if they were the right sort of demographic, would be recommended to go get one of their friends to get some uh, cannabis for them from one of the coffee shops and then come back, share it outside and those patients, they would come back on the ward and they would be happy, their pain would be reduced, they would have the munchies, which is a good thing, and no nausea. So as an adjunct to therapies, it worked really, really well. And there was no medication that we could offer those people that would have those same benefits. All right, so in coming here this time, I was asked to provide a title uh, for my, my talk, even before I had written my talk as such. So it was a good way to get focused. And one of the things that I realized about being able to change laws um, is that we need to all work together on that. So I want to talk about a variety of strategies today that anyone can employ, employ at any level. And I know that 
uh, I'm, I'm well aware that many people here in Nimbin have been campaigning for 40 or more years already. And I, I want to acknowledge too that Brian and I being elected is kind of the apex of that uh, activism. You normalize it so much that people are willing to vote for the legalized cannabis name, not specifically for myself or Brian, just for that name. And it became socially acceptable to do that. So that should, that already shows a huge shift in our consciousness. Um, when you want to bring a message to people, it is really important that you speak the right language for that particular demographic. So in one of my previous roles, I was a product trainer for uh, Nature's Own Vitamins and then after that, Swiss uh, Vitamins. And it was part of my role to go to different pharmacies uh, and GPs and talk about the different supplements, the indications and contraindications. Now, when you're speaking to a pharmacy assistant, you need to have a different talk with them versus speaking to a doctor about the same product. Uh, same speaking to pharmacists as well. The information that you want to divulge differs once again. So pharmacy assistants on a very basic level just need to know what the product does, um, who they might be able to recommend it to, and basic contraindications for side effects. Then uh, pharmacists, they tend to want to know what they can companion sell the product with because that directly affects their profit margin. And GPs very specifically just want to know the research. Okay, so those are three different languages that I had to learn to be able to give the same message to a variety of uh, different demographics. And this can also relate to clothing as well. You know, if you go into a, uh, an area, I don't know if you've heard, Perth, Claremont, very, very fancy, and you need to look really professional there, because otherwise they won't hear your message. And if he goes to a, an area that I live close to Mirabuk, which is low socioeconomic class, you need to adjust to that as well. Because with any message, that you want to pass on to people, it is important that it resonates and doesn't isolate. You know? Because once you've lost people, you can't get them back. It takes a lot of work. Now, with any activism, you'll find that there are passionate, strong, opinionated people who will participate. This can lead to friction at different times because we all have really good opinions and we want everyone to listen to our opinion, which is fair enough. But you need to be aware of terms like purity politics where you might not agree with someone on a few things, but you can all get together on, say, the legalisation of cannabis. You may have different ideas about how to go about that. And one of the things I learned from Extinction Rebellion about that, which I really like, is that everybody has something to contribute. And it doesn't matter what they contribute, it is important um, that all those contributions are seen as equal. So if you're that person that wants to get arrested out there, please, that, that's fine, if that's, if that's your thing. If you do not want a criminal record, which is entirely fair as well, you might want to provide cakes or nibbles at the next strategy meeting. And all of that sits at the same level of contribution and acknowledges that we all have different skills that we can contribute to the same cause. You know, there's a whole bunch of techniques that can function um, as a whole with different layers of activism. So, anyway, we are back to all roads lead to Rome eventually. And I'm going to talk about uh, some of the actual strategies that everyone can participate in, even with very little resources available. So, something simple that you can do is talk about cannabis in conversation 
with people that you might not know that you are pro cannabis for instance. You could talk about, oh yeah, uh, if it comes up, my mum uses CBD for pain. My a friend of mine has a child with epilepsy and is using cannabis very effectively for that. And these are all really simple, effective uh, sentences that we that are not too scary to talk about and don't necessarily cover anything illegal. So we may every time we say cannabis, uh, talk about cannabis, we are normalising it just that little bit more and making it part of the national conversation that we need to have. Here. So, conversation is one thing. The second thing is petitions. The WA government now allows for electronic petitions since the beginning of this year, so that's quite good. Some governments may not accept uh, electronic petitions from sites like change.org or, or similar sites like that. So if you want to start a, a, a petition, make sure that the form you are doing it in is acceptable to the government of your state or federal government. So, um, with petitions, they can be quite wordy, um, but what is very useful about them is that every time a petition goes through a local council, a state government, or a federal government, it needs to be discussed in the commission that looks after petitions. So in WA, I have been assigned a committee known as the Environment and Petitions Committee and every Wednesday morning we go in and we talk about all of the different petitions that have come through. Um, for some petitions, we may need further education about a, a particular topic and for other petitions, we may uh, liaise between the principal petitioner, uh, petitioner and the minister who is dealing with that particular portfolio. So every time those petitions come through, so the cannabis space, you are forcing a committee of about five people usually to talk about cannabis. And that is a really nice way to normalize that conversation in places where people make decisions. All right, then, the other thing that's really big for effective activism is having a community that supports you. And I think that NIMBIN is an amazing example of that type of community. We have long-term activists, we have um, people who don't necessarily smoke or, or use cannabis, who see the benefits that everybody is getting from uh, medicinal uh, use, and when I'm talking about cannabis and, and using, there is a massive overlap between medicinal and recreational use. Okay, so a lot of people think that they are quite separate, but what we're seeing is that people come home from work and instead of maybe having a glass of wine or some beers or whatever, they will use cannabis to wind it down. And that is classified as recreational in a way, but at the same time, these people are getting a good night's sleep, their anxiety is reduced, and they will wake up better the next day. So it is definitely a medicinal benefit right there. Um, so in other things that I've noticed here is, um, yeah, like I said, with that sense of community, people are so friendly and so caring here. And that is a lovely platform for you to take out to the world. Sorry, my iPad keeps on going dark on me, but that's okay. We keep on going. All right, now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is fashion. So some of you would have seen me yesterday wearing my cannabis leaf dress. Okay, it's quite the icebreaker. I've worn it once in the par in Parliament, in the chamber, when we were discussing uh, cannabis. Thank you. That was quite brave, just so you know. And Brian, he supported me by wearing his cannabis tie. Uh, uh, people were really shocked when I walked in there, and then they laughed. But it was all within the rules of the standing orders around the dress code. So they couldn't actually kick me out, which is kind of cool. 
um, some fashion items. And as you can see here, there's people with all sorts of cannabis prints, uh, cannabis leaves, hats, clothing, all of those things normalize it. Um, you know, when I, I've been out in my, my cannabis dress a couple of times and after work having to go shopping or something, uh, and people out themselves so beautifully. Uh, we get a, oh wow man, that's such a cool dress, eh? Hey? And yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and they just, it creates conversation. And it is wonderful, it's an icebreaker. I mean, who could have imagined, say, 20 years ago, that a, an MP would walk into Parliament in the Upper House wearing a cannabis leaf print dress? And that shows the progress that we are making. All right, now, another thing that you can help with is protests, and I realise they're not necessarily for, for everyone. Uh, but they don't, you know, they, they can be a good way to create media interest, and to show your message to a greater audience. Now, in WA, in Parliament, we get an email, and I imagine it's the same across the board, when there are people uh, protesting about different subjects in front of Parliament House. And then you can choose if you want to go there and talk to them, or interact, or have a look, or avoid them all together. So, with protests, it works much better if you are a happy, colourful, friendly bunch of protesters versus a bunch of angry, screaming people. Your message will be heard so much better if you make people laugh with your clothes and your fashion or look at you or, uh, you know, because you, you, haven't, you haven't isolated them. You are still resonating with them because we all like happiness, we all like art, we all like uh, community, we all like those things. So be nice, basically. Be clear, but don't be angry out there. So um, another thing that you can do, very simple, and a lot of people do that here already, and there's ample opportunity here, is to buy hemp products. We have hemp foods coming through, we have skincare products coming through. Show big business that cannabis and hemp are really good business options to invest in. You know, as people may have a health food shop and decide to get some hemp products in. They may have a pharmacy, they may have a market stall. There's a whole range of ways that you can increase the profile of products out there. So, and then um, lastly, have fun. You know, enjoy life. Be healthy. There's no greater advertisement for uh, cannabis and hemp products than us. We are all the brand ambassadors out there and we can all help to create a really positive narrative around cannabis um, and the use of cannabis. Right. Thank you all for being here. I'm just letting the lovely uh, MC know that we can do questions. Thank you, Sophia. Um, sorry, I just have to MC from the chair here because my miracle got to the limit, so I think that. Uh, awesome. And does anybody have any questions for Sophia? I would like a mic. Want me to go next to your mic? No. Okay. Hi, can you tell us, is there any actual, um, uh, uh, think we can get cannabis legalised in Western Australia, now there's two people there, and what sort of timeline do you think we'd be looking at realistically? Okay, good question. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite that psychic about when. I think it's safe to say that it's not going to happen in this parliament. So we've got another two and a half years to go. We have... Uh, suggested it four times now to the government that they need to legalise cannabis. Uh, and as I've mentioned earlier, our last no was the politest no that we got so far, so we feel we are moving forward with that. Um, 
My guess is that it will likely happen in the next parliament. Uh, we know lots of people are working on it, and uh, the Greens in South Australia, for instance, they've got a bill up. So if one state or another state legalises it, I suspect that the other states will fall into line much more quickly. Uh, it'd be lovely if that be WA, but in the end, it doesn't matter as long as we get it legalised. Um, we uh, we uh, legalised cannabis in WA has presented a bill, uh, or we have a bill as well that has been presented to the government. It's not going to go any further at the moment because the bill writing people have been told to work on stuff for labour versus our bill, but that's okay. The initial draft that we have is a one and a half centimetre thick document and it's made things very, very complicated. So we would like to go through that and have a much more simple version available that is more, uh, more easy to adhere to and gives uh, local councils some input on how they want to in, uh, implement uh, cannabis into their uh, economy. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any more? Um, what do you think um, the interaction of the federal government and maybe some of the international treaties that we're signatories to, uh, what effect would that have on a statement? I'm having a lot of trouble hearing that. So, um, I was just wondering, you know, Australia is signatory to some international treaties, some of which mention uh, marijuana. Yeah. So, um, and at a federal level, obviously, it's illegal. So, I was just wondering, what is your idea about how the state and federal governments and the international treaties? might um, interact. Okay. Um, thank you. Good question. I heard it better the second time. I really appreciate it. Um, we, if at a state level, we don't get to impact uh, national politics quite that much. So when we do talk about uh, national things, our state government shuts us down quite quickly by referring that on to the federal level, which personally I feel that's a bit of a cop out, so I think that's a shame. Um, international treaties, well, uh, if you're looking at how medicinal cannabis is taking off and it is heavily corporatized, which is both good and bad, I guess. Um, Australia will want to see a strong export market there, and we are definitely working on it. A WA company called Little Green Pharma is doing incredibly well. They've got a lot of stock going to Denmark as far, far as I know, and Gina Weinhardt also invested a lot into that company. Um, so we need more treaties on that. Corporate interests will definitely drive that. And, um, does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah. So, yeah. What, I, what I really meant, I guess, was um, is there a purpose to um, legalising marijuana at a state level when uh, ultimately it would have no effect? Um, so, what yeah. I was trying to say was perhaps you, you could tell you. us that you know this is about statement making and. Um, this is about creating a normalisation of marijuana yes. and that would be the purpose of yes. uh, legalising at a state level. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is it. And it, it, to, to get full legalisation, we need to have the federal government involved with that. So, sorry, uh, it wasn't quite as succinct, but yeah. Um, you, you, you know, the, the fact that we are in the state level government means that we are paving the way for that sort of thing to happen at a federal level. And it is about analyzing. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. I have a question. Does that mean the mining magnets are going to own cannabis? Um, 
I, I, I can, yeah. There's, a, there's just the one that I know of, okay? That's it. But you have to understand that um, any industry that becomes economically viable will have corporate interests around that. What we are trying to make sure that we do with the bills that we put forward is to make sure that artisan producers are protected in that and that we get local industries around that. We might get someone growing hemp for paper. We might get someone making uh, know, edibles of some sort. Uh, you know, some suppositories here. Um, which, yeah, anyway, interesting. Um, the, when you're looking at legalisation too, it is about safeguarding, all right? And we're safeguarding minors in particular and safeguarding a people away from criminal interests. So when we talk about legalisation, um, we want everyone to have equal access. I, we don't want it captured by large corporations, but there will be a component of that because that is simply how our society and how economy works. Hmm. Any more questions? Why is it that state and federal governments have so much sway in, um, in terms of making all these decisions when we're actually a Commonwealth country and the UK has been a large advocate of uh, medical marijuana for a long time? Um, yeah, that's a really big shouldn't question. We, shouldn't we follow like the common law of the Commonwealth, not the actual Australian fictitious laws? Um, <laughs> that's going into a whole bunch of interesting areas. Um, I, I don't have enough knowledge to really answer that, but I understand your perspective around that, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, we, we, lead, we are talking about the plant being more dangerous, being more dangerous than a whole range of pharmaceutical drugs and guns and all, all sorts of things, you know. So, um, yeah, we, we already got a great disconnect going on there between what people want and what governments want. Okay, I think. Uh, covered it all. Covered it all. Thank you very much, Sophia. I'm Thank sorry you. I didn't see you for chilling here. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions later and you see me walking around, come up and chat. Please, yeah, feel free to approach Sophia with your questions.